All right, good morning. Welcome to Fishing Squad. It's the 15th of November, Wednesday, the 15th of November, and we're on our way to North Wales. It's approximately oh, so much it's approximately quarter to nine in the morning. We're at Birch Services on the M62. It's been a terrible journey here already. We set off at half six as soon as I'd finished my night shift. I look, that's what I look like. Shite. Um, Definitely not. It's just been traffic all the way here so far, so I thought, sod it, we'll pull in, get something to eat from Greg's. Got a sausage baguette, brown sauce with a latte. We'll pull in, have some breakfast, give traffic half hour. It's not going to go anywhere, that traffic, till after nine o'clock at this rate. Um, so, yeah. So, looking at the winds and stuff, we're going to fish a, a sh shallower mixed ground rock mark to start with and then there'll probably be a beach beach session on thursday which is tomorrow obviously and then friday there'll be a, a rock session targeting taupe um on a deep water rock mark the mark we usually fish um that's just planned around the species on and the conditions it may change because obviously it's only a small finger of land that we're fishing off on in north on the north wales coast um, the weather comes and goes. Um, it could change for the better or for worse, but it looks like it's going to be okay. So uh, we'll see how we get on. Um, I'm going to call it possibly ABC Angling Centre and Anglesey for some uh, worm on the way. Um, and then uh, we'll get cracked on and get down the coast. Probably have a couple worm that catches nothing. Worm that catches nothing. <laughs> Probably have a couple hours of sleep before we get out tonight. I'm fish probably most of the night um, till dawn, I'd imagine. We'll see what happens. So, fingers crossed, we'll talk more about rigs and tactics and all that at the mark. Um, but just join us on the journey there for now. Just been in Anglesey Bay Centre, picked up some worm. We've got uh, five packs of black, five packs of fresh, fresh rag. Couple of little bits and bobs, um, really fairly priced tackle centre to that. Um, it's not the first time I've been here, so we're going to get back in the car and head further down the lane. Right, we're here, just getting some bits ready for uh, a session. Low tides at half three, we get down there for low, fish it all the way in and back down. Um, we've got a number of things ready. We're going to take some tote rig, stroke husk, conga rigs. We've all got wire snoods on. Uh, there's an odd dongle rig in there with also some panel rigs, mainly panel rigs. We've got mackerel squid, black lug, and ragworm for bait. I'm just sorting some chum out. I'm just going to take a bit down with me because the session we're having on Friday, we're hoping to get on the better, you know, the, the more productive tote mark of the two that we fish. I haven't had a tope of thermal fishing today, but I haven't really persisted with it. So I'm just going to decant some chum into a bucket here small bucket to carry down to this mark just to, so we can put a little bit of something in just to give us maybe an edge the, this is the chum i made last week so I would, approximately 10 days ago yeah. so uh, we'll give it a stir and we'll decan something to this bucket here hey i'm just going to give it a stir what i've noticed is by putting the sand in it's obviously got a bit of salt content in it because a bit of squid in it's barely gone pink it's obviously like preserve it a little bit but the whole sand sucks up on it yeah, we're using sand in it, just to recap, if you watch the last video. So obviously it helps you see the bottom way, the green base, and I'll have them just floating able to surround the test. So we're going to give this a good stir up. There's no mould on it or anything, you won't go off. It's so, that's it, it's just that. But it smells fishy. You don't stink, you don't absolutely stink, but it smells fishy, doesn't it? Mmm. It's not in the air. Perfect for it because it don't it don't go up to 
point where you want to just throw it out and you can't smell it when it's in the car. It's just loose in a tight tile bucket. It's absolutely fine. The problem is that deteriorating now, so quite a bit of air to it, to be fair. I'll just leave that on there to be, to be alright, won't until Friday on there. Yeah. But, sort of taking down wheels. It's not a lot, but if you just chuck a bit in every so often, all oh, labour intensive. This has gone because we've already done it, you know, we don't need to be down there slicing bits of fish up. Done. The huss, every time we do this, the huss show up, so we're not really targeting huss, but if something if we can get something feeding, something else might turn up. Cod, bass, bream, you never know, dear. Fingers crossed. Right, we're down. I'm just been uh, making sure my reels are all functioning. I've just re-spooled both, both my multipliers before I come out. So I've been checking them out, making sure the cast are right and stuff. It's a lovely venue. It's got we've got a westerly wind. It faces easterly, and basically, it is just so sheltered. Jay's only got one red out on the bottom. Got half a mackerel out on that. On a on a um, circle panel rig. I've just been testing my reels out. Just fired a lead out, plain lead out. So we're going to uh, fish one rod with a flapper rig. That'll probably be that one, the Tronics Pro Grill of Surf with a Slosh 30. £25, £70 leader. We'll probably fill the fish. We're going to fish the other one with a tote bait, bus bait, conga bait. For uh, those species. So we'll get sorted, do some bait presentation, show you rigs, and we'll get cracked on. The first rig we're sending out on the Slosh 30, the tuck flapper with ragworm on both hooks, size 1.0 hooks, size 1.0 tamers, got a 6 ounce gripper, just going to fire that out, see if anything's knocking about. I just fancy using rag on both hooks on first bait up, because I think if, there's, if you're going to catch something different, it'll be on ragworm. The ne next rig is just a simple pulley, pulley rig with a dongle, 8 ohm meat hook. Been using J hooks for the as a dongle in the dongle rig setup. It's, it works fine. Um, I, all the all the dongle really does for me is just gives me something to enable me to clip down into the Gemini splash down decent hooks. So yeah, this this will be going getting fired out. It's a short, fairly shorty snood, about twelve to fourteen inches, four foot two hundred pound mono Gemini splash down seven ounce lead. Simple as that. Jay's just into the first fish at session. It's got a dogfish. On a double circle panel rig. It's took the bottom up, can't it? Oh, is it on the big hook at the back? That's the little hook. Yeah, the bottom hook, yeah. Nice one, Jay. We'll get him an hook and have another go, yeah? yeah? Everybody seems to be bleating on about Huss and Doggy ID. I mean, there's obviously nasal flaps. Um. Close its well, the easiest one is I've got black eyes. We'll show you a huss later on when we get a huss out, hopefully. Just had a Tom Pot Blenny on Ragworm. First bait up. It's a shame it's not a common blenny, but it's got the horns and the coloration of the com of the Tom Pot. So we'll get him unhooked, have a picture with him and get him put back. Alright, I've just stuck to Tiddly diddly conga on the put a clip down rig on to try and get out a bit further. Black lug, small conga. We'll get him up, get him put back. I haven't really had much interest in my big bait, so I've uh, decided to put something a bit bigger on, like nearly a full mackerel with some squid wrapped to it on a panel rig rather than a dongle. So we'll see if, see if we can snag something, oh, preferably not the seabed. Alright <laughs> then, guys, I had a bite a minute ago on that big bait. Developed to nothing. I think I might have had a huss on or something like that. Put another big bait out. And we've got one. Nine and a half, well, just shy of nine and a half pound. It's a big male. It's actually a male. Sorry, I couldn't show you the eyes. I've got a picture on my Instagram of the eyes on a huss. So, yeah. Gonna put back, try and get, I'm trying to get him put back, try and get another one. You've got his eyes open, that. Hey? That quite good for its size, yeah. Eh? Nice one. Right, I'm going to get him put back. Jay's just had a husk, but it's got some crazy markings on it. Look at its underbelly. Is it? 
That is mad. What a fish that is. In its own right. Do you want a picture of it? I've just had a dogfish. Didn't even know I had it on on ragworm. Get him up, get him put back. Uh, Jay's into something decent here. Same top double. Yeah. We had it in a snag and it's freed itself. We've seen what it is because we're going to have to be careful. If it is a horse. Oh, wait, there. wait, wait, wait. Where's your neck? Where is it? Oh, you've got a rustle on a flapper, yeah. Yeah. Right, I'll go down and get it. You can see it. Where's it gone? Down here. Right, yeah, he caught it on flapper rig. And literally, I went to grab his main line, but with a swell, the main line passed its own 20 pounds straight through. Um, but the swell's wow. down here. I had to go down and get it. It, it's not, it wasn't too dangerous. I was safe, what I did. Nothing silly. It's a, it's a nice one again, isn't it? Another nice, another be, decent one. We'll give him away. Yeah, we're well, lucky that he got out of snagging. We'll just give it a bit of line and give it a bit of time. It eventually pulled itself out of the snag. So we're going to give him away. We'll get a nice picture of him and we'll carry on. What I will say, I'd just like to mention about these, um, especially in this size, the Tamer's Hooks, the, 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 if you do hook something, if you get a 1-0 size, they're a little bit bigger and they're a little bit stronger than just a standard Aberdeen, you know, they've, they handled that fish perfectly. What, what let us down really? Squid we're not, tentacles. Yeah, squid tentacles, just so everybody Three knows. Squid tentacles, the way. Um, yeah, what did uh, work with squid tentacles? Um, we were going to load braid on his reel before we go out, we didn't have time, we'll, we'll probably have to do that next time, because it might cost him a fish, but... Yeah, well, that was down with 20 pound main line, but we managed to get it out anyway. Nice one, Jay. Right, seven and, well, just shy of eight pound bullos. Nice one, Jay. Lovely it's fish. You can see its eyes there. See its eyeball. It's dot. It's pupil. Doggies don't have them. Get in. Male bullos. Had two male bullos tonight. I can't remember what the small one was that he had, but yeah. He's going to get it pulled back. We're going to have to move back because we've got some waves coming up to the tripod at the moment. So we're going to get a few things moved back. Just be yeah, probably move back to the bungalow at this rate. When you're high up like this and it's difficult, you've got to wait for a wave to come and then just throw it in, haven't you, Jay? Yeah, probably. It's, there's there's not really much else you can do. Go on, you'll be all right at that. We're high, up, we're high up and there's not really much yeah, you can do. Tough as old boots to go back, no problem in that white water. It sort of, it sounds a bit, it looks a bit crude, but the white water, it's got a lot of oxygen in it. And oh. it, do, it, do, it does cushion the fall a bit because you wouldn't be able to swim in that amount of oxygenated water. You'd probably just sink. But it cushions the, it's not good practice really, but there's not else you can do. Not anyway. Yeah, right. I think we're going to think about just moving back a little bit. Right, last, last, last fish of the night. It's a conger that's lassoed itself around Jay's flapper rig. We're going to have to free it out. Let's get some slips and we'll just free it out. There we go. Good old baby conger. All free to go back and fight another day. Nice one, Jay. Right, well, it's the morning after that session. I'm absolutely knackered. I don't know why I'm moaning. I don't know why I want some. It's like I want some sympathy. Self-inflicted. Basically, my first <coughs> night shift back was Monday night, <coughs> and Sorry. from from Monday morning till eleven o'clock, midnight Tuesday night, I had four hours sleep. <laughs> absolutely shattered. Oh my eyes are so puffed up. Oh, my eyes set off straight after a night shift. Yeah, oh, my eyes set off straight after a night shift. We, you know. You only live once, don't you? It was worth doing. We've had one of our better sessions, that it's got, it's got to say. Um, I called it with Chum. We, we say it, me and Jay talk about it all the time that <clears throat> when we put Chum in or any sliced fish, we always get huss on these marks around North Wales. Now, the mark of fish yesterday it was it's a fairly shallow mark. Um, what we find was over low tide, it was a big tide. <clears throat> we're staying on the clean ground and we're fishing quite effectively. I think if we'd have got there earlier, with the smaller rigs, we might have caught some other small fish. With the species, one, obviously. Weather played ball, so we were casting further. Yeah, we? weather played ball, so we were able to cast it. We were mad because we've had so many sessions. It's the, the only sessions I can remember in the last sort of four months of fighting winds and stuff, you know, trying to cast out, just trying to get your lead off the rocks. Uh, <coughs> but yesterday, we put some a few, a few little tactics together. We had the flapper rig. It's beefed up with 50 pound snooze with a 1-0 tamers on. Um, 
and just in case, I'm, I'm, I made them just in case we did hook a hus on this mark, so I plan to use them on that mark. And I'm glad what it worked and it paid dividends because it really worked really well with Jay's hus. Um, not many people get an, an eight pound fish on a flapper rig, do they? Um, I, think, I think that's quite a respectable achievement, even if it is a hus and they're not everybody's favourite fish. We love them um, because basically it's usually the 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 B prize around here, but they're, they're like a B plus prize, really. You know, they're stunning fish. Saw that one with all the markers on what Jay had as well. Be beautiful fish. Um, I'm just glad we found them because it, there was a spell where we caught a couple of tiddly dogfish. I had a tiddly eel and a um, Tom Pop Blenny. Um, and I was concerned that, that my thoughts or what we expect to happen wouldn't happen. And they did happen. I reckon in a sort of probably a two hour spell, we probably had a couple of other hus bites. And maybe if we'd had four rods out, we might have caught a couple more out of there. Um, but with it being a big tide and, and a shallow mark, as the tide got to the top of the flood, there was a horrendous pull. Um, and it, it was fishable just, but it didn't help things. I think it probably switched on again after high tide. Well, we didn't register the bite, would it? No, no. It had probably switched on again after high tide. But it was interesting. Out, say how shallow it is, that mark gets some real rip. Um, you just wouldn't expect it, would you? It's only, I bet it's only 15, 20 foot deep at high tide, isn't it? It was, so, it was as bad as deep, Mark, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Mm, so I was gonna, we were going to do this all as one video, but I've decided because we had a decent session last night and it kind of looks like we know what we're doing. <laughs> We're just going to leave it as well. A couple of fish last night that we did last time we were here, So you might notice in the film, there might be a couple of bits where there's like a glitch where I start talking about something else and I go on something else because I was I think I've, I've edited out the bits where I've said I'm going to do it in, in a, one video with three sessions for, for this section in North Wales. We're going to do it with three individual ones. So today we're going on to, on to a beach. Possibly Whistling Sands. Um, and we're going to have a go for bass and then tomorrow we're going to hit the deep water rock mark then on saturday we've got a fantastic session we've got a meet coming up we're meeting paul my mate paul you've seen some videos brilliant brilliant guy he follows a lot of youtube tubers and uh we're going to meet a couple of the youtubers as well with paul a couple of their friends and what have you we've got, i think we're meeting master fisherman scott harris west wales fishing for a, a decent session on the Mersey. So we're good, there's going to be three other videos involved with this. We're really looking forward to Saturday, guys, by the way. We cannot wait. Seven or eight of us. Um, yeah. But it's like we don't want to wish our time away in Wales, but at the same time, no. we are kind of, aren't we? We're, hoping, we're really hoping that the Mersey produces some lovely fish, you know, some rays and what have you. If not, we'll just fill boots up with a load of white and get them in the freezer. Um, but we're, we're proper excited, super excited about that. And... Um, it's just a shame that we're that excited about it. We just feel these next two days is going to evaporate. Um, we just, yeah, it's going to be a good one. So I'm hoping to all subscribers. I want to say thanks for all, for all subs, and I hope you enjoy these next couple of videos as much as we're going to do. Because I think I think I think we've got off to a flyer really. Um, that could be a bad thing. That could be a bad thing. I think we did about what did we do? We must have done eight hours on that mark yesterday. But, uh, it flies by though when you when you. Um, you're doing stuff, you know, when you're putting chum in, when you I did a good seven. When you, yeah, when you're tying, when you pre baiting rigs, and then you you're doing something else, and then you're getting a, a, a juddery bite, and you're reeling, there's nothing on, then you have to rebate your rod. It flies by. Well, that down there in light, didn't we? Well, we knew it, we were having to put head torches. Yeah, on. yeah, yeah. So, well, like I can say, overall, we're just happy we had a comfortable session. Just recapping on, I'm happy that uh, we both had us. Um, and just going back to thanks to the subscribers. Hope you enjoy the next couple of videos. Keep an eye out for them. I'm going to get this one on today, so it's so it's available. Um, hope you enjoy it. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping we get some more fish out, basically. So we're on, what date are we on now? We're on thir 16th. It's Thursday or Wednesday? Thursday, 16th. Oh, we're on Thursday. I keep thinking we're on Wednesday. <laughs> I've lost today somewhere. I've gained a day. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So... Uh, I hope you all enjoy these videos as much as we're going to enjoy them. Um, I think we're going to get some quality fishing because the winds are have eased and we probably should be fishing a deep water up mark because we've got the species and we need to try the beach. So, because there's at least four species we could between us have off the beach. That Jay's I've got both. Eh? I've got both before. 
Okay. So we'll see how the beach session goes and then we'll take it from there. So, uh, yeah, we'll uh, see you in the next one. I've gone on a bit, but um, tight lines, um, keep safe, and we will see you in the next one. Thank you very much. Bye.